Okay, so for today's setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running with the very awesome Ryujinx Nintendo Switch emulator for Windows PC. So in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you which files we need, which game file extensions work fine with Ryujinx. I'm also going to be showing you how to map out your controller and also go through some video settings. So anyways, if you want a very awesome experience using your PC as an alternative to your Nintendo Switch and the ability to upscale to up to 4K, then check this one out. <laughs> Okay then, before I start today's Ryu Jinx Nintendo Switch emulator for Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like. That means you'll get notified every time I release a setup guide like the one I'm doing today. Also helps my channel out a great deal too. So we're looking at Ryu Jinx. Now with this, there's also, of course, another Nintendo Switch emulator, which is Yuzu. Now, some people for both, or some people go for one or the other. Personally, I think they both got their strengths and weaknesses. Regardless, we're going to get on with Ryu Jinx today. So we're going to go over to the Ryu Jinx website. Now, what I'm going to suggest doing, first of all, is just hitting on the compatibility tab. And just here, you'll find which games are playable with Ryu Jinx. Now, you're going to find that games on Yuzu might not work. However, Ryu Jinx might support them. So with swings and roundabouts, really. So what we're going to do is just take a look closer. Now, status playable, what this means is that most of the game will play probably 98 to 100%. Uh, your other games here, such as Incomplete, uh, Crash, need to avoid these, really. But there's going to be fixes for most of these games. If you generally type into your favorite search engine, Ryu Jinx, and then the name of your game, it will normally give you little fixes, but we're going to get into that in a bit. So what we're going to do is just back out of here, and we're just going to download the latest version of Ryu Jinx. And we're going to download this for Windows 10. And once you've downloaded it, you're going to download a zip folder. So if we double left click on this one, Inside of here, we're going to need to extract the publish folder. Just drag that onto your desktop. Okay, cool. So we've now extracted that onto the desktop. And what we can do now is just delete this Ryu Jinx zip folder. Just right click on it and delete it. So let's go inside of the folder here. And what I'm going to use for this setup guide is a couple of Switch games. If I go into my games folder, We've got NSP and an XCI file, and we've got Sonic Superstars, which is a totally awesome retro game. And we also got Super Mario 3D World, very awesome stuff. So what I'm gonna do is just drag my games folder into that publish folder. Next thing I've got here is a keys folder. And in keys, I've got prod.keys and I've got title.keys. So what I'm gonna do is also drag that folder into the publish folder. And finally, I've got the latest firmware for Switch. And this is 17.0.1. And again, I'm going to just drag this into my publish folder. Now, let me just make a note. The firmware folder needs to be in .zip. You don't need to extract this one. So if we double left click, you're going to find lots of these files, but we're not going to extract this at all. What we are going to do is open up Ryujin. So if we double left click on XE, and if you're using Windows 11, Windows protected your PC. What we're going to do is just click on more info and run anyway. Okay, doke. So Rio Jinx was unable to find your prod stock keys. So let's just go to OK. OK, so as we can see, it's now detected my games, but we need to do something before we start playing. If we go to file, we're going to go to open Ryu Jinx folder and we're going to go down to the system folder. Now, if I go back to my publish folder, what I'm going to do is just go into that keys folder. And if I highlight both of these and right click, I'm going to copy both of those files into that Ryu Jinx system folder. And if I come back out, let's open up Ryu Jinx again. So that's the keys now installed and the next thing I need to do is actually install the firmware. So I'm going to go up to tools, install firmware and install a firmware from XCI or zip. 
Now I need to go to my publish folder where everything is. So I'm going to go down to publish and if I just scroll down, I'm going to find firmware 17.0.1 here. Just left click on that and open. Install firmware. So let's press yes. And firmware has been successfully installed. If we just press OK, what we're going to do now is just go to file and exit. And if I go back into it, Reojinx. Here we go. So we now got artwork for our games and everything should be up and running at this point. So first of all, let's just test out one of these games. And for full screen mode, I'm going to go to options. Okay, cool. So as we can see, the game boots up with no problems, but my controller, my Google Stadia controller isn't working. So let's go back into Rio Jinx and sort this out. Okay, so what we're going to do is go to options, settings, and we're going to go to input. And from here, I'm going to just go down to player one, configure, just press on that tab. And here we go, input device. I need to select my Google Stadia controller just here. And now we need to map all of this out. What we can do is actually make a profile. So if I go to add, I'm going to give it a name. You can call this whatever you like and just press on OK. OK, so I'm going to select my just Jamie profile and load it. And now it's just a case of mapping out your controller. If we go to controller type, we can actually select pro controller to map and so on. What I'm going to actually do is select pro controller. And then it's just a simple case of going through the buttons in mapping that out with your controller. So if I left click on A, I'm going to press the A button on my Google Stadia controller. And so for B, and X, and Y. Now for plus and minus, for plus I'm going to press my start button. And minus is going to be my select button. Directional pad is your D-pad. Very simple to map these out. And left stick is obviously going to be your analog stick. And to map this L stick button, I'm actually pushing down on my left analog controller. I'm then going to go down to right stick and just push down on my right analog stick. And for triggers, And then obviously when you finish mapping everything out, what we're going to do next is go down to save and apply and save. Now, technically, if I open up the game again, my controller should be working. Cool, and as you can see, Sonic Superstars is running just fine. So it's a little bit laggy now and again, and what that's doing is just building up some shaders and it's chucking it into a little folder. Uh, so next time you play your Switch game using Ryu Jinx, it won't have that problem, it shouldn't. Now, before I go back into Ryu Jinx again, let me just give you a little tip. If you're running a not so good gaming PC or a PC in general, and you want a little bit more performance out of it, I'm gonna suggest you download Razer Cortex. What Razer Cortex is going to do is free up memory on your computer, so it's going to disable lots of background processes, 
And rather than using the traditional control or in delete route where you can actually manually end processes, Razor Cortex does this for you. So I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one. And once you've installed it, just go to Game Booster and go over to Boost Now. What this is going to do is start releasing memory. It's going to start disabling background processes. And as we can see, this is now going up. Okay, so I'll just free to myself 3.4 gig a byte of memory, which we can then use to make our games run better in RioJinx. So let's go back to RioJinx again. Now, rather than manually going up to options and going to press enter full screen, we can actually let RioJinx do this automatically. So if we just go to options and just go down to... So if we go to options and then just select the second option down to start game in full screen mode, whenever we start a game now, you'll find out your game will automatically start in full screen. Okay, so let's look at video settings itself. We go back up to options, settings, and if we just go over to graphics, first of all, what I'm going to say is if you're running a game through Ryu Jinx and you're finding that it's just a black screen, it's normally something to do with your graphics backend. So this is on Vulkan. If you find you get a black screen, just switch it over to OpenGL. And that's normally the main reason that you'll be facing a black screen. Also, just make sure if you're using a GPU, and I hope that you are if you're running Switch games, just make sure your GPU is selected on here. So I'm obviously using a GeForce RTX. I'm not going to select Intel XE graphics because that would just literally burn my computer to the ground probably. Now resolution scale is where things get interesting. This is where we can upscale Switch games to four times, which is 4K we'll say. But I find the sweet spot for this when I'm not doing setup guides is around two to three times and games look really stunning. Now we've got post-processing effects just here. We got FXAA, SMAA, low, medium, high, and ultra. So depending on how good your computer is, you're going to be running this on. Just go up gradually and find the sweet spot. So obviously each computer are different with different hardware inside. We've also got upscale just here. So I find personally bilinear and works okay for this. What upscale does is just clears up little bits of pixelation here and there. We've also got anastrophic filtering. Now again, just like upscaling the resolution to say 4K, under anastrophic filtering, it's gonna work the same. If you bump this up too much and your computer can't hack it, then your computer is gonna fry. And aspect ratio, personally, I suggest leaving this to 16 by nine. Most Switch games are designed for 16 by nine. Okay then, so earlier on in the video I was talking about using your favourite web browser to search for games if they're not working. So you can go to GitHub and there's a Rio Jinx page here for example. And this is going to tell us bits and pieces how to get games running when they should be but they're not for you. So this is a Sonic Superstars page. And there's going to be information here including log files, that type of thing. So if you're finding... It's going to be a little bit buggy for you when it should be. It's always worth checking out these types of pages. And this is going to give you a little bit of information how to get better performance. Okay, so that's it for today's Reuging's Nintendo Switch emulator setup guide for Windows PC. So hopefully I've covered all the main parts of it in getting you up and running with that. Now don't be asking me where to get your games from or as many of people say in my comments, ROMs. Uh, I'm not even going to question that. Uh, whenever I get asked for where you get your games from, the ROMs from, your comments are instantly removed as per YouTube policy. So please don't ask because they will be deleted. Anyways, if that's fair enough for you, please hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. So anyways, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.